everyone, and welcome to Aquatalks, hosted by the Estates at Aqualina. We see some people joining us. Good morning. We have a very exciting show. We're going to celebrate the restaurant industry and culinary arts with an engaging demonstration and chef interview. So as people are signing on, I wanted to begin with a quote. We've done this for our previous Aquatalks. So this one says, food is our common ground, a universal experience. Not only is food a basic need of life, but it's something that's invented and reinvented and we all share it around the world through history and in our cultures. So this quote was by James Beard, who was a champion of American cuisine. And many of you might have been to the James Beard House in New York City. This was his former residence. It's so historic, it's amazing to be there. And today it's home to the James Beard Foundation. So this is a great segue into our show as our guest chef, who you can see on the screen. She was a James Beard Award winner. She won Best Chef for the Southeast Region as part of the prestigious James Beard Awards. And this is a huge honor. It's really considered the Oscars of the culinary industry. So now that I see many of you um, are joining on, wow, it's, we got a great crowd, Michelle. Do we? Yeah. <laughs> My name is Alexandra Wensley, and welcome again to Aqua Talks, hosted by the Estates at Aqualina. The Estates at Aqualina is located in Miami's Sunny Isles Beach and features 245 luxury residences, all set on the beach, um, beautiful amenities, and it's really all about the living experience. And we're so excited to bring you every week our Aqua Talks. So our guest chef today is a Miami native who needs a little introduction. She's one of the most influential and iconic chefs in South Florida, but everybody knows her. Her incredible talent and personality has taken her outside the culinary world and outside of the kitchen and onto TV and books. She really has done everything. She um, is host, you might have seen her show on PBS, um, as well, it's called The Check Please South Florida, as well as on ABC Channel 10 every Saturday, So Flow Taste of Florida. She also has a cookbook, which I have, called uh, Cuisine a Latina. She's done it all. In addition to that, she also runs Michelle Bernstein Catering, with her husband, David, and the new Cafe La Trova restaurant on 8th Street, which is amazing. And she's also a mother of Zachary, who's eight years old. So maybe he'll appear on our show today as well. She's as bright as the Florida sun, and what you taste in her recipes are the most important ingredients, her heart and soul. I'm so happy to introduce my very good friend and chef, Michelle Bernstein. <laughs> How are Hi, you, uh Michelle? I'm good, my love. Good. So um, what are you going to cook today? So, um, you know, I, I kept thinking about you and I and how, you know, we're such old friends. By the way, I caught the bouquet at Alex's wedding. That's right. <laughs> so many years ago. I know. God, I was so funny. Um, anyway, so I thought it would be kind of cool because I thought about you and I and what we could sit and eat together, right? And And... Right now, obviously, um, the gift of just something fresh and something made by someone else is so nice, right? But if you don't mm -hmm. have that possibility right now, then uh, to make something that seems like it comes from a restaurant, but it actually came from your own hands. So I'm going to start out with one of my favorite salads. Um, if we were in Paris, which I hope one day we will mm -hmm. be, um, it would be a salade frisée lardon. Um, but because uh, frisé was hard to come by in the last couple of days and beggars can't be mm -hmm. choosing right now, I turned it into a beautiful salad of anything you can find um, with a poached egg and some crisp pieces of bacon. Now, if you don't eat bacon, you can make crisp pieces of mushrooms. Uh, you can do mm -hmm. tons of bread. Um, you can throw in your favorite cheese. You can do fruit. Mm -hmm. The great thing about this recipe is that you can really do with it as you wish. You can kind of play and make it your own. Um, so you can, you know, don't say, I don't want to make that recipe because there's bacon in it or whatever else, because mm -hmm. it can be anything, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's no excuse. So um, <laughs> I brought some of, um, beautiful greens that I actually found at a farmer's market 
um, yesterday. Uh, this is some beautiful baby kale and some red and white oh. endive or endive. Um, mm -hmm. And this is going to make my salad today. Um, okay. And I wish I could share it with all of you. I'll share the recipe, but um, yes. it's hard not to share food right now. Okay. okay. Um, that sounds I, great. So I'm going to let you get right into it. Everyone, okay. if you have questions during the cooking demonstration, I'm going to come back at the end for the, an interview with Michelle. It's going to be exciting. So you're going to want to stay to the end. So put your questions in the chat and I'm going to sign off. Enjoy. Yeah. I'm also making you all a little dessert today. Um, it's a salad of all kinds of purple and red fruit with a lemony uh, creme fraiche topping. So real nice fresh. Um, topping for that. So I, I like to put a nice cold wet paper towel on top of my greens uh, and then I put them back in the fridge after I've cleaned them and gotten them all cleaned and ready and trimmed and that way when you go to eat it there's nothing else that needs to be done. I also made the lardon which is the crispy little bits of bacon. You can get your favorite kind of bacon. Everybody's got bacon still um, and I like to freeze it and then cut it. It makes for easier cutting Put that into a saute pan. Don't put any fat in the saute pan, no oil, and let it slowly cook. This took me about 20 minutes uh, on a very, very low heat. It just got nice and crispy. Now, if you want to make the vinaigrette with the bacon fat, all power to you. I'm not going to do it right now, but man, that's yummy. <laughs> I'm trying to watch the fat just a little bit, um, but it's good. All right, so I am now going to make your vinaigrette, and I'm going to do it with an immersion blender. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can do it by hand, or you can do it in a regular blender if you want to. But it really um, helps to emulsify, which means to thicken the vinaigrette really easily. So I'm just going to take a plastic cup or any kind of a clear container. I'm going to add uh, some of my favorite. You know what? I'm going to start poaching the egg before I start the vinaigrette. I think that's a good idea. Um, yeah, I'm going to do that. So I always, when I poach an egg, first of all, the water came to a boil. It's now come down to a simmer. I put it down to nice, medium, low. I'm adding just a tiny hint of vinegar. It helps keep those, um, the whites on the eggs that you want and get rid of the whites that you don't want on the egg. So just a little bit, only a teaspoon. And don't let that vinegar reduce too much because you don't want the eggs to taste like vinegar. Then I'm actually cracking the egg. Amanda, if you want to show them how I'm doing this. I'm cracking the egg first into a bowl and then I'm gonna pour that into the pot because to crack, first of all, on the pot, you might add shells into it. And what if it breaks? Then you've got nowhere to go. So you wanna pour into a bowl and then into the pot. The next little tip, see how that water is simmering? So the first thing I do is I stir the heck out of it. I'm causing like a whirlpool effect so that when you add your eggs in, they don't stick to the bottom. Okay, somebody set a timer, please. Do me a favor, Alex, if you can. Set me a timer for three minutes. We've got it, don't worry about it. Okay, so timer is set. Next thing we're gonna do is start on this vinaigrette. So I've got a little bit of red wine vinegar. I've got my favorite Dijon mustard. I've got a little bit of water. I'm pouring all this into this cup. A little bit of lemon juice. I'm just squeezing a little bit of lemon in here. I decided to throw some shallots in here because I love shallots in my vinaigrette. So I have these little diced shallots right here that I'm going to go ahead and add to the mixture. I'm going to season this with a little bit of salt. I'm using Malden, uh, Malden Big Crunchy Salt, which is my favorite. Uh, and then I'm just going to go ahead and start my blender. I hope that this is enough to blend. I don't have too much in here. Let's see how this does. Okay, and as it goes, I start adding the oil. And what's great about this is you're making an emulsification without an egg yolk. So 
So I could keep going forever with the uh, with the oil, by the way. Um, it'll take like a cup of oil. But right now, I like for the acid to be at about one to three. So three times oil, one time acid, whatever kind of acid you want to add. Um, so, all right. So here's my beautiful vinaigrette. My eggs are almost ready. I'm gonna go ahead and check on them. Oh, they look beautiful. We have 30 more seconds. Let me get a clean bowl, ready to go. All right. So I personally like mine really soft. So I am just, I'm gonna remove it. To me, it looks absolutely beautiful. And um, Amanda, can you show them with the camera what the vinegar does? Do you all see how the white, that is not the white you wanna eat, the albumin is separated from this gorgeous poached egg, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and set that into this clean bowl. All right, here's the other one. And I can feel that it's beautifully poached, creamy on the inside, just gorgeous. So let's go ahead and finish this whole plate and I can actually get rid of my little stove and set this aside. So here's our salad. I'm just gonna do a little drizzle of this emulsified Dijon around it and go ahead and place your eggs right on top. And so what I love about the salad is that you have these warm eggs, right? The crispy bacon and the cool greens of the salad that just makes for a beautiful, beautiful marriage. And like I said, if you wanna change this around, add some candied nuts to it, whatever you wanna do to it, make it your own. And that's what's so great about handing off a recipe is that you're actually giving the gift of maybe some, opening up someone else's mind and creating. So I'm gonna just show you how the eggs turned out. Um, it opens up just beautifully. See that? Yum. Cracked eggs, greens, mustard. Oh, so I'm in heaven. So that is the salad recipe and um, I'm excited to eat this later. All right, so let's move into our dessert. And for dessert, it's really great and simple. Um, and again, we clean all the fruit and um, place it with a nice cold wet towel on top into the fridge. Um, and here it is. So today uh, I've got some strawberries, some blueberries, raspberries, and I decided to add some pomegranates because I found them at the store and these just make, I don't know, it just brings out this great crisp, crispy texture to this salad and I love it. So I started whipping some cream already. I always like to keep my whipped cream uh, in a bowl of ice. Uh, so I have a bowl sitting on a bowl of ice right here, staying really nice and cold. Um, all right, so what we have is a little bit of creme fraiche. And if you don't have creme fraiche, sour cream works really well as well. One of my favorite whipped creams to top on anything that might be um, too sweet, like a chocolate cake, like a flourless chocolate cake, something like that. Um, a butterscotch pudding would be a creme fraiche whip because it gives you a little bit of tartness, but it also gives you that texture of whipped cream that I truly have an, an issue with because I love whipped cream. All right, so I have, can you guys see the, the whip that it's almost totally whipped? Yeah, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of creme fraiche to it. And you all have these recipes so you can see the amounts. I'm gonna go ahead and zest, ah, I'm making a mess. Go ahead and zest um, the zest of one to two lemons, depends on how lemony you want it. And I just have a microplane here. If you have a zester, that works fine too. Microplane is great though, because it's so fine, you know, that you can barely tell that the lemon is there, but you can, ah, it smells so beautifully fresh. To be honest with you, I wrote these recipes um, when Mother's Day was coming around because I thought that this would be such beautiful recipes for women, but honestly, my husband loves this kind of food too. So uh, you can make it for anybody. 
Not so much the eight-year-old. Not really a recipe for him. This would not really be a favorite uh, of his, for sure. He might munch on the bacon, but that would probably be about it. All right, so I went ahead and put the zest of almost two whole uh, lemons in there. I've got my creme fraiche. The only thing I didn't add, uh, I've got a little bit of powdered sugar, which I'm gonna add in there as well. And go ahead and fold all of that together. And then we've got this gorgeous lemony tart spread. Now, I didn't whip my whipped cream until it was stiff. If you like your whipped cream really, really stiff, then after you add all this, you can go ahead and whip it again. I love mine when it's nice and soft, just the same. All right, so for our berries, uh, I have these lemons. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my lemons. And I cut around the core. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but let me show you what I have left. So this is the core of the lemon, and then I cut around it. And I do that because this is all seedless now. Um, and so you don't have to worry when you're squeezing things into like cocktails and vinaigrettes and, and things like this. Uh, you don't have to worry about the seeds because when you cut around it, it's virtually seedless. And then you can take more care in squeezing the center core part. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, squeeze a little bit of lemon over my berries. And by the way, this makes a stunning presentation in a trifle bowl. If you wanna do it that way, I would mix everything in a bowl and then layer it up in a trifle bowl. I have a little bit of granulated sugar. If you're going sugarless in your diet right now, then you can use stevia, you can use whatever it is you like. I found this monk sugar recently that's delicious and it has no aftertaste. Um, I've never read anything about it though, so I don't know much about it. So eh, I don't know how safe it is, but it was yummy. Um, all right, putting a little bit of sugar on my berries. I've got my last clean spoon. I'm gonna go ahead and mix my berries all together. I didn't add the pomegranate yet, just so you know. I'm gonna add that after. as a little topping. So you really want this to kind of macerate. You want the sugar and the lemon to really macerate in your berry because the longer it sits, the better. Um, honestly, this is so good the day after. Um, it's really wonderful after all the juices have come together uh, with a scoop of ice cream. It's pretty fabulous. But um, if you want it really fresh and just a la minute, which is in the moment, go ahead and Take a little bit of your pomegranate and put it right over the top. Isn't that pretty? Look how gorgeous. The pomegranate almost looks like jewels inside of this salad. I just, let me see, is that the right angle? There we go. So pretty. And then let's go ahead and take some of this creme fraiche whip with lemon in it and put it right over the top. When it's time to serve, of course, don't put your cream on top until it's time to serve but you can make all this stuff ahead of time if you'd like to serve it for dinner. I'm gonna go ahead and try it. Since I'm by myself here, <laughs> I got nothing else to do. I'm gonna taste how this came out. Mmm, lemon's good. I love that, I love creme fraiche. Like I said, you can use sour cream instead and this would just be a beautiful mix. Okay, Alex, I think it's time for questions. I am back. I want to taste it too. I'm sure like everyone else. Yum. Yummy. So everybody's asking about the recipes. They are available at the Estates at Aqualina website, but we will email everybody your two recipes. I'm not sure which one I like better, but of course dessert. I mean, it looks amazing. Um, but there were a couple of questions that came right in about uh, the poached eggs. Sure. So Marcia asked, she said, how many minutes for the poached eggs in total? Hi, Marcia. So from the moment you put them into the water, if you want them very runny, set your timer for exactly three minutes the second that the egg hits the water. Um, if you want them a little more creamy and less runny, then go up to three and a half minutes. But I wouldn't go more than that. And make sure that if you're serving them right away, you do just that. But if not, there's a way to stop the cooking process and you can warm them up for later. In case you wanna get all this done ahead of time, you can actually pull those eggs out of your water uh, at three minutes. Put them in ice water, let them sit in there. And if you wanna warm them up for later, put them in for another 30 seconds and then you have the most perfect 
creamy eggs. Mm, great tip. Okay. And then someone had a question about um, Dijon mustard, and they wanted to know the brand um, that you prefer of Dijon mustard and salt. So it's funny. The Dijon mustard I'm using, I can't pronounce it. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no. It's, it's a German Dijon mustard, and I go around collecting mustards. So to say that I have a favorite um, is not really fair, but I go to these... Um, can I say the name of the store? Is it okay? I guess so, right? I think so, yeah. Yes. It's a TV show, so I'm allowed to actually say names at this point. So um, I'm used to not being able to say anything. <laughs> so I actually go to Markey's and I look through mm. their shelves. And by the way, they're open right now and they are doing a really, really great job at um, making sure that not a lot of customers are there. They have markings on the floor that mm, people are That's great. And they also bought some other stuff that they don't normally sell for regular people um, that don't want to necessarily buy fancy stuff like mm. milk, and, like me, milk and citrus and all that mm. stuff. Anyway, I go through the shelves and I buy a mustard. I try it out. I run out of it and I go and I buy another one. And I do that a lot. And I do that at all kinds of markets, whether it's a Whole Foods or, um, mm. you know, anywhere really, Milo, mm. whatever. So yeah. yeah, that's a good tip. And then Sarah also wanted to know about salt. So salt. Okay. If you're baking, I use the finest of sea salts because if you ever notice when you try to sift and your kosher salt will get stuck in your sifter. So you're supposed to use a little bit of a finer salt for that. If you're um, cooking everyday cooking, just normal stuff, I use kosher salt for almost everything else. And then when it comes to um, things that I want to top with like a nice crunchy salt, mm -hmm. I use Malden from the UK. It's delicious. Oh, and you can get that here? Yeah. Anywhere. Of course. Okay. And by the way, the smoky mold in that's really delicious. Yeah. Um, it's great for like putting on meats and things like that. If you want a little smoky yeah. flavor, it's delicious. Yeah. We're getting a lot of questions coming in, but I want to know, so how have you been spending your time during this pandemic? Tell us what you've been doing. So um, I have been doing a lot of dishes. <laughs> <laughs> I have been homeschooling my um, mm -hmm. boarding board, who I'm looking at right now. Um, I have been... Uh, cooking up an absolute storm, not only for um, my husband, my son, and a little bit of me. However, I, I'm not I'm to actually start exercising, eating a little bit less. Um, but also, I, I take food to my dad. Um, and, you know, I just try to keep up with everything. I've also been fortunate enough to have been working um, on the guidelines for opening restaurants. So I'm one of the people chosen to actually work with uh, Mayor Jimenez setting up the new guideline mm. task force. So that's been taking a lot of time as well. Um, oh, I'm sure. And your opinion is so valuable. So that's great that you're doing that. On how to do takeout. You know, we, we yeah. did it the other day and it went, it went really well. Takeout is tough though. It's, um, you know, mm. people never came to La Trova for takeout and we're turning mm. around take out but we are opening next week um we're only allowed to fill our restaurants 25 percent, and uh, we're very careful in teaching our staff every single day for hours on end um mm -hmm. how this new beginning will be yeah wow and 25 percent because cafe la trova it's all about the energy that high energy and the excitement and the great food and drinks the energy in the food in the drink and yes we'll have live music um, oh, good. But no dancing. Not yet. <laughs> okay. Yes, true. I know a lot has changed, but you're done. So going back, you're doing a lot for your family and cooking. So what are you cooking? Can you tell us some of your dishes? I'm sure everybody wants to know. Um, so remember, I'm, I'm trying to get all of us to eat at the same time, which is kind of difficult. I don't eat flour. I'm gluten free. Um, my husband is a, a large man. You know, he's six one. He 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 needs to eat, right? And then Zaki is, um, has become picky during this time. Uh, oh. so things like bolognese, which I love making because I love the smell of it. It reminds me of my mother. I'll make a really good bolognese with anything I can find. These days, if you can't find the beef, use turkey mm. or chicken. Um, mm -hmm. And I eat it on chopped up iceberg lettuce because it looks like noodles if you cut it this way. Um, mm. And then obviously for pasta for the boys, uh, whole roast chickens um, and mm -hmm. serve with all the juices that collect at the bottom, defat them a little bit, but put all kinds of vegetables and potatoes mm -hmm. and everything underneath so that I don't have to cook 
you know, in two pans. It's a one pan cook, which I love. Uh, yeah. A lot of poaching salmon for me. Uh, mm. Grilling has been great. So I've been grilling whole snappers, uh, slathering mm. them with all kinds of very green marinades and things like that. So, you know, no different than probably most of you. Yeah, but you know, my husband, Craig, as you know, he's been cooking a lot of meat. So I was so excited for Mother's Day when I ordered the Capri La Trova meal and I had the salmon and it was so delicious. Thank you. So um, thank you. I needed to bring more fish into my diet. Um, well, anyway, Marcy just came back and she wanted to know, um, are you doing cooking demonstrations a lot? Um, you know, I, I'm filming my show. I've been filming my show, um, SoFlo Taste, uh, every other week. And we film it in my backyard. Uh, and it's mm -hmm. rather warm, but we do it. And we try to film at least two to three shows in a day. And so um, I've been doing a lot of that. As far as Zooming goes, most of my Zoom is being done for education purposes. Mm. <laughs> yes, yes, with Zachary at school. So, um, so SoFlo, that airs on Saturdays at what time? 10.30. 10.30, okay. And okay, great. Check, check, please, the new season, which we aired before all this happened, um, is starting to air, right, Amanda? Um, next week? You don't know what day is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Every time I turn on PBS, you're on the screen. So my kids are like, there's Michelle, there's Michelle. It's great. We start airing uh, next week. And I know that um, I'm going to start filming something on Zoom with them to speak before each mm -hmm. show comes on to okay. explain to people that these shows were filmed. We sat next to each other before uh, the pandemic. And so, right. yeah, we always need okay. to explain to the viewer what's going on. So that leads, so the show, Check Please, it's all about people say with their favorite restaurants. So this question came in prior to our talk via email, and her, um, this came from Natasha, and she wants to know your three favorite restaurants that you love. <laughs> I know. So the problem with this answer mm. is that um, I don't know who's coming back. And it's, it's heartbreaking, but um, we're, we're hoping that people come back. We just... When we open for about, you know, to 25% capacity, and I'm being really honest right now, we don't know how many people can actually um, sustain themselves that way mm -hmm. and for how long. But um, to answer your question to that point, uh, Petit Rouge um, mm -hmm. on Whiskey Boulevard, 123rd. Yeah, in um, my neighborhood. Meal is probably one of my favorite restaurants and where I go on dates with my husband and uh, to me he is one of the best cooks sorry if you hear a golden doodle barking uh, one of the best chefs that we have um, in South Florida um, oh let's see check pleases thank you Monday and Thursdays at 7 30 and Saturdays at 5 30 okay great thank you Amanda for that uh, so restaurants what else um this is tough i'm trying to think of who's coming back you know mm. that, that i'm sure is coming back oh you all have to try tim and baloo's restaurant in mm. downtown so tim and if you remember alex used to work with us at the mandarin oriental um, yes. he was an incredible cook back then and now he's an incredible chef and um he is doing a great job at takeout so order takeout from him um, beautiful food. He's Trinidadian and, and he does this mix of Trinidadian Chinese because that's his background with a little bit of Thai. His um, mother-in-law has taught him. Beautiful food. And I think lastly, I'd like to do a little shout out to my favorite Italian in South Florida, which is Machiavellina. Um, yes. He's soon and he does uh, some of the best pasta in town, but he's also doing for takeout, he gives you a kit of pasta and sauce and instructions and it works every time and it's amazing it's really well done mm. um the food is delicious okay oh i'm going to try that and so the first restaurant you said is in my neighborhood but someone just asked what's the full name is petite rouge mm -hmm. petite rouge yeah. okay yeah yeah so okay good. really so before i get to the other questions there this question also came in prior to our talk mm -hmm. and um it's from edlin and she wants to know how can i repurpose overcooked and or frozen summer squash? Oh, what a great question. Mm. So there's a lot of things you can do with that. Number one, one of my favorite things is squash soup. So you can saute a little bit of garlic, some onion or shallot, 
Um, when it's really nice and soft, go ahead and add that squash. Um, you can pour in either your homemade chicken or veggie stock or purchased because no one will ever notice. Um, <laughs> veggie or chicken broth. Um, some nice fresh herbs to finish that would be rosemary and thyme is delicious mm. with squash. Uh, I would cook that until everything kind of comes together mm. because your squash has been frozen, it's probably already a little soft. Mm. And so it will only take you 20 to 30 minutes. Puree it and you know it would be beautiful finish mm. to that would be a little bit of creme fraiche. That would mm. be really If you don't that have that yummy. One half tablespoon of butter pureed into that is also very delicious. I would finish mm. with a little bit of black pepper and you got yourself a gorgeous soup. Oh my God, it sounds delicious. I'm sure it's very satisfying too. I love soup. Right now yeah. I love soup. I find it so comforting right now. Me too, me too. So, I mean, you have so much creativity. Like, where does it come from? Uh, I mean, I don't have a head for numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta have something that I know how to do. So there you yeah. go. Okay. So now I'm gonna check. There's a lot coming in with the chat. So just give me one second. Okay, repeat that. Okay. And then a questions. Oh, can you use boiled egg instead of poached? Oh, absolutely. Hard boiled egg is delicious. You know, every Niçoise salad has the tuna and the hard boiled egg. I love, in fact, I always have um, fresh hard boiled eggs in my fridge. Um, and if you wanted to, um, you could undercook them like, I'm talking 30 seconds undercooked, mm -hmm. uh, just so that they have a little bit of a softer center. But yeah, hard boiled eggs, I'm a huge fan, they're delicious. Okay, me too. So I just, I boil the water and then I take it off the stove and then I let it sit for 12 minutes with the lid on and yeah. then you have to cover it. And cover it, yes, with the lid on. I, I would do 10 minutes, Alex. 10, okay. And Good tip, I know. I I'm always learning from you. That's really um, Deviled eggs. If you make deviled eggs and you put mm. them in the salad, it's also mm -hmm. really delicious. And it's just a couple steps more, but whew, yeah. yeah, yummy, yummy, yummy. Yeah. So I'm going to go again. There's a lot of questions. This is great. Um, so this came from Jean. Does fruit salad have peaches? I can't wait to eat those salads, she said. So does your fruit salad have peaches? It doesn't today because I don't have any peaches, but I cannot wait for peach season because it just so happens that peach and berries are a beautiful marriage, really made in paradise. Mm. And then she, um, another one wanted to know about the bacon that yes. you use. Um, what's the best way to cook it? This came from Maria. So um, I wish I could ask Maria if she wants to cook bacon in strips or bacon in pieces because mm. oh, when you're cooking bacon as like a crouton idea, you know, as a garnish. I like to um, freeze the bacon so that it cuts easier because if you ever try to cut bacon that's already defrosted, it's just a nightmare, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. unless you have the sharpest knife in the universe. So freeze it and then cut it small, as small as you want it. Put it into a nonstick saute pan over a nice low heat. Let's say 10 is the highest and one is the lowest. I would cook it like at a two or a three. Every mm -hmm. once in a blue moon, stir it, and you'll have gorgeous crispy croutons. Now, if you want to cook crispy bacon strips, like for breakfast, mm -hmm. my favorite way to do it is the restaurant way. Um, I place uh, a cookie sheet with a peach of parchment paper, and then I put, sorry, my son's being loud, and then I put bacon down on it. Um, I try not to, never to overlap the bacon. And then I put another piece of parchment and a piece of, um, and another cookie sheet sitting on top of that to weigh it down. And then I put mm. that into a almost 400 degree oven uh, and I let it go. It probably takes you about 20 to 25 minutes, but you'll have straight, beautifully crispy bacon. The parchment paper allows the bacon not to stick mm. and you don't have to scrub your pan or either one, the one on the top or the one on the bottom by the time you're done. Oh, wow, what a great tip. Okay. And you did mention you're saying have a good knife. So what, what knives do you use? <laughs> so um, <laughs> that's another conversation that we, we can have. Um, I have a different knife for every use. Oh, so yeah. my chef knife is different than my paring knife as far as companies mm. that make it. My paring knife is different than my carving knife. Mm. Okay. I, I love having different brands for each type of knife. Um, mm -hmm. And Believe it or not, what's the one that we use that Victoria we get on? Knows. The really cheap one? Yeah. So there's this parent <laughs> knife that we chefs use. Thank you. 
This knife is one of the sharpest, mm. amazing knives you'll ever use. They come in serrated and non-serrated. They cost about $6. I know you're freaking out. <laughs> okay. Tornox, you can find it on Amazon. Um, and it is insanely good. And when it's not, you throw it away. But we give, we use these in the kitchens. We buy like 50 of them and we hand them out to the guys in the kitchen. And believe it or not, they're using this almost more than the fancy knives. Now, if I need a perfect cut of something, if I'm mm -hmm. filleting fish, I would never use it. But mm -hmm. for like a utility kind of thing, it's crazy how good that knife is. Mm -hmm. So someone just put on, I think Renee, she wanted, oh, what a beautiful spelling. She spells Renee, R-A-N-A-E. It's very oh. pretty. Yeah, very different. She just wanted to know, she wrote, thanks, I love this. She wanted to know um, what brand of that pairing knife. You just look on Amazon and you click pairing uh -huh. knife. Victorinox. What is it? Victorinox. Okay, Victorinox. Okay, great. Um, so let's see, there's more questions coming in. Uh, let's see. I wish you gave me a little percentage every time I said that because I've said that. <laughs> Oh, and this came in from Antonio Racias. Hi, Antonio. Um, where do a celebrity chef like you shop? And where, it's two questions. And where do you think we can find the best ingredients for day-to-day -day cooking? So I was wondering if, if he was asking about wardrobe or if he was asking about food. Now I'm guessing. Oh my God, I love it. Food. I think he's going for food, but. <laughs> I would think so. so I want to um, know wardrobe. The ladies want to know your wardrobe. <laughs> it comes to ingredients. Um, I go everywhere and anywhere. So it depends on what I'm cooking, of course. I love going to, um, first and foremost, farmer's markets. I used to love the red, green, yellow, red, green. What is it? Red, green, yellow. Anyway, the one up in Hollywood. Oh, yellow, um, green, yellow, green, yellow, green. Yeah. Oh, that farmer's market. I've been there. <laughs> yellow, green. I go to right here. I go to Legion because I live in right on off this mm -hmm. over in the 70s. So I go to Legion Park a lot. Well, I used to. Now we can get all that stuff online, luckily. So I try to go local first. Um, there's a really great market up next to Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market where I get a lot of my proteins mm -hmm. and it's called Brothers Farmer's Market. I also love the the fish truck over on Biscayne Boulevard um and a hundred and like sixteenth around there. Um do you remember the name of it? Is it Blue Runner? Yeah. Blue Runner. Oh yeah, go there. It's yeah. great. It's yes. Most own salmon. It's really good. There's a line yes. now. So um yeah. it, it's just it's really fresh and really yeah. good. Proper sausage has some of the best mm. meats, um pork, chicken, um, and they make the most delicious sausage ever. Um, I go to, like I said, I go to Marquis for specialty. I go to Whole Foods for mm -hmm. dairy. Um, and then you have places like Mozzarella for mozzarella. Um, mm. I have the Asian markets along 163rd that I couldn't live without um, to get all my little baby vegetable, like Asian vegetables. And I love um, using special soys and things like that. So. Mm. Yeah, I mean, um, I'll sometimes go to three markets in a day, depending on my menu that I choose for either home, TV, um, and then restaurant, of course, we use purveyors that come to us, thank goodness. Right. But, um, and a lot of these purveyors are selling to you at your home, by the way. So the Chef's Warehouse is actually um, mm -hmm. a really amazing purveyor that does specialty, but they also do great steaks. And, um, you know, everybody's kind of broadened their horizons. And they'll come to your home, look up Chef's Warehouse, as well as Primeline, one of the best Italian distributors in South Florida. They will come to your home as well. I've had these big trucks driving up. Um, oh, wow. Driving off, you know, a box of stuff. Yeah. Uh, and it's been, honestly, a savior for me. Because um, mm -hmm. it's, for, for my brain, I need to keep cooking and keep creating. And without mm -hmm. that, I wouldn't be able to. Right. Um, just so everybody knows, we're recording this, so we're going to post it after on the Estates at Aquilina Instagram and Facebook pages. So if you're not following the Estates at Aquilina, go ahead and you'll see, uh, we'll post this recording. Someone just said, where did, what was the name of the place where you said you purchased your chicken? Delaware Chicken Farm and Seafood Market. Yeah, they are on 441 in Davie and um, they are amazing. They have some of the best birds. As a matter of fact, 
I would go with my dad when my mom told him what to buy for Thanksgiving because they have oh. the turkeys in South Florida uh, and ducks, whole ducks and things like that. So I've been going there since I was a little kid. They're amazing. Oh. And by the way, the best stone crabs in Miami. Mm. Okay. Wow. Great tip. Okay, more questions. Let me just see here. Yeah, Carmela said thank you for that. Um, let's see. Okay, how do you use summer squash? We did that. Let's see. So someone say where they can see more of you. Of course, no one can get enough, but they can you see more of you. More of me. <laughs> <laughs> Especially my family. Um, so. I'll be in and out of La Trova. Um, I will definitely, um, oh, by the way, we are starting again at the Centurion Lounge to do food. Uh, hopefully um, in next month, you'll see my food. I do the food at the Miami airport. The Centurion. Airport, yep. I've been in there, I was so surprised. It was so good and then I see your name and uh, yeah, it was a moment of delight too. Um, that's great. Um, Okay, so I also had another question. Um, what's the most essential item in your kitchen? Which I love your kitchen setup. Really? It's yeah. So, I like so it. With the it's, it's really funny because when people see my kitchen, they're like, oh my God, I thought it would be huge with an yeah. island. And it's really funny because all of my kitchens professionally mm -hmm. have always been so small so that I could see everything. I have mm. to see I have a little bit of OCD in the kitchen. Um, so I think to answer your question, mm -hmm. I would probably say olive oil, extra virgin olive mm. oil. Um, I don't think I could handle, oh, there go the dogs. I don't <laughs> think I could handle anything without it. Okay, that's yeah. great. Yeah. yeah, I get my olive oil from Greece, so pretty well, lucky. As a matter of fact, I cooked at your Greek festival that was beautiful. Yes. And I still have, Hang on a minute. Okay. <laughs> I still have this gorgeous olive oil. Oh, yes, right. Remember okay. Laconic Sun. Um, this is really yummy. It's my second bottle, and I'm so afraid to open it because I've been, like, holding on to it for dear life. <laughs> it's so yummy, and I used the first one yeah. too quickly. So that's what happens with me. I, I, um, I go crazy, right? And I use it all, and then I realize yes. how it is, and I'm like, oh my God, I need to slow down. And that's always what happens with yeah. things. But I like it. You're always so open to trying new things. Someone did say, what is your favorite olive oil? This sounds like your new favorite. I, I don't have one. Um, you know, I, I'm all, every day I find a new olive oil that's my favorite olive oil. So I don't necessarily um, have a favorite olive oil. My son is, uh, is up. he's sending me signs. Aww. I know, really, we're all just like adapting with our kids at home. And yeah, we just have to do it all. Can I um, send um, hugs and kisses out to my mother-in-law? Because I just found out that she's watching too. Jeannie, I miss you terribly. And I love you. Oh, that's great. Hi, Jeannie. <laughs> Um, so you did mention Cafe La Trove is going to start to open, and so um, they'll be open next week, and you'll also still do a takeout menu and delivery service, or you'll just be strictly? Yeah, okay. you know, all of us, uh, are the Independent Restaurant Coalition, um, we all are trying to open our doors, um, but we're not in a hurry. We want to do it the right way, and so we're doing it very like baby steps you know little by little and so we have to do takeout to sustain so um, if if you don't feel comfortable going out yet which mm -hmm. i'm on the fence to be honest with you um order takeout it it will save yes. a family it will save a business um okay. please continue to take out food mm -hmm. yeah. yes i totally agree very supportive let me just make sure i got all these other questions look very pretty um, out Oh, thank you. It's, uh, oh, what does Edlin say? What's the name of the second restaurant Michelle mentioned? I guess that was earlier. Um, 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 Baloo. B-A-L-L-O-O -O in downtown Miami. Mm -hmm. So good. Um, he's doing takeout. Get his takeout. It is amazing. Mm. Have your mind open because it's, um, I mean, he does beautiful vegetarian vegan dishes mm. also. But one of my favorites is, and don't make a face, Alex. Um, he makes gorgeous roast goat and he does oxtail. And oh, things. wow. But he also does chicken and fish, okay. and normal stuff. But yeah, oh my God, the food is so, it has a lot of veggies. His yeah. vegetable dishes are probably my favorite. 
and uh, so much power, so much passion mm. behind every single recipe. Um, but what he does with vegetables is really incredible these days. Mm -hmm. So at the Estates at Aquilina, this is our Aquatox. And so we get a lot of people from Miami, but we get, you know, from all over the U.S. And so we have a lot of New Yorkers on. And so if someone wanted to know, like, where can they see you? Oh, someone from Chicago as well. So we really attract all these people that come to Aquilina. Um, all the Chicago people that I'm the host of Check, Please, which, by the way, is probably one of the most popular shows for dining in all of Chicago. Oh, wow. I'm the host of it because it's the Chicago Check, Please, but Obama was on it. Um, and it's a really great show. And uh, it has quite the captive audience in Chicago. So... Um, yeah, you can watch. Oh, by the way, if you're not local, um, I do a lot of non-local shows. I'm always doing different Food Network or, or Bravo things. But also, if you want to see any of my local shows, you don't have to be a local to watch them. You can go to SoFloTaste.com and you can go to Checklease.com mm -hmm. and you can see episodes and get recipes too. Great. Well, Michelle, that was so great. It was so wonderful having you. We look forward to welcoming you back to Aqualina when it opens, because I know that you and Zach and David um, love the resort as well. So. We love to come, and, and also I'd love to do a cooking class there hands-on next time. Yes, yes. Well, thank you. We had such a great audience. Thank you, Michelle. We so appreciate your time. Um, and you've just been wonderful. Everybody's writing in. Thank you. You were great. Um, so everyone, thanks again for joining us. Please come back next week, same time, um, same day, Wednesday at 11 o'clock for another fantastic Aqua Talks. Bye, everyone. Bye, Michelle.